Hi there, my name is Jane and this is Lupin Mabel's Closet. Now today's vlog is all about my hinterland dress which I am wearing and I just thought I'd do a quick review and just show you what I think. back so yes today's vlog is all about my latest make the hinterland dress by so liberated i have had this pattern to show you the instructions that i printed off i've had this pattern to be stitched in my pile of to do's for months and months in fact it was in my vlog of my makes last year so it's that it's been in the pile that long and I thought I really must tackle that pile of things to make. And this fabric I've used for the dress was uh, gifted to me from Minerva uh, in exchange for a blog post. I am one of the, on the Minerva blog team and uh, this is from them. It's a linen viscose and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just full of colors, as you can see. It's got the turquoise, it's got the old gold, it's got chocolate brown it's got the cream background it's got different shades of greens all of the colors in my color wheel I think I'm warm autumn dark autumn I think it is and these are all of the colors and it goes absolutely perfectly with my turquoise frayer top that I made last year which goes with quite a lot of things in my wardrobe I was saying in the last a few vlogs ago that this color I would no way have thought of looking at this color this time last year it's just not a colour I would have thought suited me or just not a colour really that I would have looked at. And I, it, I just love this colour. It really does go well with the, colour, the tones in my skin and it is on my colour wheel as well. So it's just a colour that's obviously been waiting for me to find. So now I've found it, I really do like it. And like I say, my colour wheel is warm autumn, dark or, or deep or That's it, warm autumn, deep autumn. I think I'm in those two shades. And all those colours are just so me, all earthy, rich, autumnal colours, which just speaks me totally. I'm a proper earth sign, I'm a Virgo, and I just love all the earth colours. Always have done browns and greens and what have you, but I would never have said that turquoise was one of those colours. So there you go. So it's worth doing if you don't know what your colour um, wheel it is. You can do it. There's loads of different websites you can do it. I think you can do it. On, there's a few on Pinterest as well. And it just asks you a few questions on your colour of your eyes, the colour of your hair, the you know the tone in your skin, and then it tells you whether you're cool or warm. And then there's um, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And then it just tells you. And then it gives you like the colour wheel of all the colours that are meant to enhance your skin colour. You your eye tone, your hair tone, so, and then the colours obviously help you in your dressmaking because you obviously pick the colours that suit you. And uh, so I'm really pleased I did that. I'm not saying I'm not gonna go out of the colour wheel and not try other colours, but I do find that all the colours in my colour wheels are the colours that I really do like anyway. So I think I'll be quite happy with my, with my lot. So, so yeah, so it's a gorgeous linen viscose. It was beautiful to sew with and I just really enjoyed this pattern. I'm so glad I made it at long last. And it's one of those, um, I'll stand up in a minute and show you. I've got some pictures as well of me in the garden just before the rain started. Just timed that right. And um, it's just one of those patterns, I think. I did it over two days. I did the bodice over yesterday and I did the, the skirt, the pockets and added it all together today. And if I'd have done it all in one go, I probably would have had it done in four hours maximum. Four hours max, yeah. Really simple, pleasant pinafore type of style to go for because I obviously went for the pinafore style. Now, originally, when I printed this off, I printed out all the pattern pieces, I was going to go for the three-quarter length sleeve. Uh, there's a few options, obviously. So I'll show you the options if you've never seen this pattern before you can go for the three quarter length sleeve or the sleeveless and also the short see if i can find a good picture there's just this one at the back i'll show you this one you've got obviously the 
sleeveless like I'm wearing, then you've got the normal short sleeved, and then you've got the three quarter sleeves, and then you've got the option of doing the smock length like I've done, or the dress length, and then you've also got the option of the placket just for the bodice, or the full length placket of the dress or smock, whichever you choose. So when I printed it out way back last year, I was going to go for the three quarter length sleeves and the length that I've gone for because it's a type of thing that I would throw on over jeans. I'm not a great dress person. I'd, I like the idea of dresses and skirts, but realistically, I ain't going to be wearing that many realistically. So I know what I'm going to wear. If, I, I mean, I do like skirts and dresses and I'll make, you know, I, I will wear them, but they'll end up, I know they will, 70-80% of the time hanging in the wardrobe because I know I'd rather go for something that I can throw on over jeans and that, that's just me. I, I'm finding, you know, that's just me and that's that's just me and that's what I like. So I was going to go for the three quarter length sleeves but then when I came to cut it out yesterday I thought well if I go for the pinafore style I can then wear it through the winter, autumn, winter because they're all lovely autumn, winter colours and I can wear it exactly as I've got it on today with my long sleeve tops and layer it because I thought if I go for the three quarter length sleeves I can't layer, I can layer on top but then you know I'm going to cover it over, I'd rather layer it underneath and then show off all the pretty placket and the buttons and what have you so that's what I did. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I took, I'm glad I omitted the sleeves and also in the summer I can wear it sleeveless which I probably won't do because I'm not a sleeveless person unless I'm abroad on holiday and it's red hot in England no even if it's a really warm sunny day I wouldn't go sleeveless I'd end up with putting a t-shirt underneath because that's just me I just I just don't like sleeveless looks on me so it can be worn in the summer and it can be worn in the autumn winter so that's why I've gone for this style but like I say you've got all these styles to choose from and a really simple make I think if you're new to dressmaking I think this is a really nice pattern to, uh, to tackle there's nothing in there that's you know challenging at all you've got the placket to add and four buttonholes but obviously you know you've got to you've got to do your buttonholes sometime you can't avoid your buttonholes forever and if you've got most people have machines these days that do buttonholes for you automatically and just a really nice, really nice pattern. Obviously, it's just a gathered skirt. Depending on the length you go for, it's a gathered skirt. So you just gather it, gather it, obviously. Do your bodice. And then the neck and the arm, obviously, I've done the sleeveless. And you get like a binding and you stitch your binding. Then flip the binding over and then top stitch it. So you get a nice little, little top stitching line. And plackets really easy to do. And yeah, really nice and pockets. I love the way the pockets are put in. They're, they're put in the way that I always like to put in some patterns. I think, what? Sometimes the way they have you to put po pockets in is um, too more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, for example, those trousers that I did in my Saw the Look number two, my decadent uh, brocade trousers, the way they, what those pockets were put in were just not the way I like putting them in. If I make those trousers again, which I probably will do because I really like that pattern and they really do fit me really nice, I would put them in this way and the way that I was taught at school where you put the obviously your pockets in, the pocket bags in first and then you press the seam allowances out to the pockets at the side and then you top stitch down the sides of the pockets so you've got a lovely neat join and then you stitch your front to the back and then you go all the way around with your pockets and down. That's the way I like to do. I just think it's a much neater way. Actually going back to those brocade trousers, those simple saw trouser pattern, they still have not got back to me and we're now in June and I've been asking them since March was it I made? I think it was March, mid-March. I've, I've sent umpteen emails, they just don't reply and then I've had to go through Instagram and like keep badgering them through Instagram. Can I have a reply? Can I have a reply? And then eventually I did get a reply, which was the same reply that they replied to way back then when I said the, the measure body measurements were out and they just went, oh, well, just measure your body and then go from there. They haven't answered those five error points that I pointed out to them at all. So I've just given up with them. That's simple so I've given up with them. But with that pattern, obviously I've made the trousers and I know what the faults were now. And obviously, what if I make them again? I won't. I won't follow those faults because I've written. I've made notes of on what to do instead. So I would put the pockets in this way. Much better way. 
I still don't know why when I look at those trousers, I know, I know I'm going a bit off kilt now. I still don't know why I put when I put that invisible zip in. You can see the you can still see the zip at the back. I, I must have I must have put it in wrong. I'm gonna have to. Well, I'm not gonna unpick it, but I'm gonna have to. Uh, mm, that's got me bamboozled. Why you can still see it? Obviously, I put it in wrong. Must have done. Anyway, I digress. So let me just stand up and show you a bit close up. And I've added um, four uh, cream buttons out of my vintage button tin. These are proper vintage buttons. There was a set of six, I like, I'd like to say, six or seven. And I've used two or three on something else. Can't remember what I put used them on. And these were the four remaining. So I, I thought oh, I'll use them up and then they won't get lost in the button tin because they were obviously off something where there was six or seven of them. And I thought, well, I'll use these because otherwise it end up getting lost in the tin and then not getting used together. I know I'm, sa I'm a bit weird with vintage buttons. I absolutely love vintage buttons. It stems from when I was a little girl and used to go around my nana's and used to literally get her tin out every single time and play with her vintage buttons. And I never liked to see a button on its own. If you know, if there was a set, I used to put all the sets together and she used to give me some wool and I used to thread them all together on a piece of wool and tie a little knot so all the little buttons were kept together that matched. And um, I'm still the same now. So when I cut this set of buttons up, I think it was seven. I think I can't remember what I used them for. Um, so there was these four left anyway and I had to use them together because I didn't want them getting separated and getting put apart type of thing. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I'm sure it's not just me that's like that with vintage buttons, I'm sure. So I put these ones on, and they're quite quite nice. And I'll stand up and just show you. So gathered, obviously skirt, and it's got a tie at the back. And I've got a seam running down the back of my back panel. I'll tell you why in a moment, but just quickly just show you and then close up of the placket. Really simple. You don't need to undo it. The placket to get your head in, in it, I don't. It just slips on over my head. So really you could, you could quite easily make the bodice, stitch the placket up if you wanted to and just have a four placket and just, you know, pretend uh, because you don't need it. Really pretty though and I'm quite happy with that and um, what was I saying about I'll tell you in a minute oh yes so you cut the front and the back on the fold both pieces and I had cut, cut them both out and those notches obviously for the pocket the pocket notches and I'd completely forgot that my pattern was on the fold and I had my pattern for some reason upside down because I knew it was on the fold and it was just an oblong. I just put the pattern on and didn't put the peak where it says on the fold, on the fold. And then I cut the notches and I cut the notches because I saw the notches and then I remembered that it was on the fold. So I'd notched down the back. So all I did was just literally did a um, tiny quarter of an inch seam down the back to get rid of those two holes because obviously I've cut two notches so that's why I've got a seam in the back uh, but you can't even not you can't even notice and it's no hard done by anyway it looks fine and then I just um, overlocked everything and just took the hem up by an inch and it just sits just sits on my knees which is absolutely perfect length for me and it's just great for going over over my jeans um, yeah, I could try it with tights in the winter. Could be an option. We'll see. But overall, really like it. Really good pattern. And as I say, if you're new or fairly uh, or you're coming back to your dressmaking and you're a little bit, you know, your confidence isn't as good as you'd like it to be, this is a really good one to start off with. And I've got quite a bit left of the fabric. So I've got enough to make a little ditzy top out of and just something to throw on over my jeans as a separate as well. Separate, obviously not to wear with this but I've got a bit left so I'll make something with that as well so coming on to the gathers if you are like me I just normally do two tracks of gathers and then pull and what have you Clover who send me quite a few samples thank you very much um, to test out and review the, she knows the rep on the Clover that is on, who sends me things 
uh, Fiona, she uh, knows, she follows me, on, obviously watches my vlogs and she knows I, I like a ruffle or two, I like a ruffle collar, ruffle sleeves, you know, ruffles. So she said to me, well, I know you do, you like ruffles, would you like to try out this new Gather a product that's come out and it's, it's called Fuse and Gather and it's by Nancy Zyman and just show you there. And the idea is it's an iron on tape and it's got two gathering lines st stitched in. So you tape it to wherever you want in your gathers and you, no you don't, you iron it to where you want your gathers. So obviously across the top of both of the front and the back of the skirt on here. And you obviously iron it down and you iron it so that the blue thread, has got a blue thread and a white thread. And I'll take it out of the packet and show you. And you iron it with a blue thread up because obviously it's fusible. So, and iron it down. And then you pull your the blue threads, two blue threads, and tie a knot in one end and go at the other end and then pull them and then it gathers it gathers what you want to gather. So I did it, I did it on here and yeah, it's quite good, yeah. I mean, it just, I don't think it makes the job any quicker than doing it by two rows on your sewing machine and pulling it, because you've still got to pull them and then you've got to anchor one end with your pin and then obviously gather the other end and then when you're happy, then that's it, your gathers are done. So it's no, no quicker, but if you've got your ironing board to hand and your irons on, and you don't want to set your machine to all the you know reset your machine to the stitch length and what have you yep good it's a good uh, good product whether i would buy it i'm not sure whether i would buy it once this is used up i'm not sure we'll see i shall keep you posted but i enjoyed using it today and the only thing is i didn't iron it one end of it down properly so i had to go back and put the iron back on to iron it down a bit more because it the one end of it was starting to come away and I'm not even sure I haven't even read the instructions do I leave it on or does it wash out I have no idea because that's typical of me pulling the china shop it doesn't say but anyway it's, it's ironed and it's in the inside so whether it comes apart or, I don't know I mean the good thing about it is you don't have to pull out any of your you know when you pull out your, your gathering threads afterwards because they're all hidden and they're all ironed in so yeah quite good that way no quicker than in total I would say because you've got to stand and iron it on by which time you stood and ironed it on I could have stitched the two rows so 50 50 there but if you like tapes and you like ironing things on then yeah really good and I will use it all I want it's not like something we're going to file away and not bother I'm not going to say no I wouldn't bother because yeah, yeah it was good but in speed wise 50 50 same same old and a little tip I've just found when you know if you, if you do use your two stitching lines on your sewing machine I used to do two lines you know and then go back and do the second line but now I don't I do my one line then I just keep my pivot my foot down an eighth of an inch or whatever it is and then carry on back down my second line so I've only got the two ends to worry about I don't have to worry about anchoring at those two ends because it's I've stitched all you know in continuous and then I just pull them and that's a really really useful tip if you do a lot of gathering uh, because sometimes you know you don't anchor the ends down and you're pulling away and then that one comes through and then you've got to start all over again if you do it that way just continuous get to the end pivot do your quarter of an inch pivot and go back down your second row you've only got those two ends to worry about so a little tip there I can't remember where I've, I've, it's, not my, it's not my tip I either read about it in one of my books because I've been going through all my dressmaking books lately uh, I either read, read about it in one of those books or it was something I'd seen on YouTube and I can't remember but little tip there so all in all really pleased so glad I made it and obviously there will be a blog post coming and it will be on the Minerva blog and gorgeous fabric linen viscose I'll put the link for this fabric as well in the box below beautiful quality fabric really really pleased with it it's um it feels proper linen it's you know it's viscose linen but it's got the texture 
and it irons beautiful. So I'm really pleased and it goes perfect with this top. So yeah, so that's the Hinterland dress by So Liberated. She's got, just, oh, before I go, I'll just show you her diagrams because they're really quaint because they're all like hand-drawn, which are really cute, like cartoon-ish type of drawings. And a good full step-by-step -step instruction guide as well. You didn't have to go, what? What is she on about? I don't understand. You know, sometimes you get a pattern. I've had a few times like that. My Jenny pants putting that zip in. Um, but yeah, you don't have to. Everything's spot on and she takes you step-by-step. -step. And if you're doing the sleeveless, she'll tell you to do so much. And then she'll say, if, you if you're doing the sleeve ver sleeved version, continue to step A. If you're doing the sleeveless, go then to step B or whatever so really clear instructions perfect perfect to give it a try as I say if you're fairly new or you're coming back to your dressmaking so hope you enjoyed today's vlog hope I've inspired you to maybe have a go at making it have a go at making a little pinny for because these are the cutest things really pinny fours you know because you can like I say you can layer them or not and then you can put them on over your trousers you could put them on over a skirt over your tights it's a really nice garment to have in your wardrobe and why I didn't make it months ago I do not know. So yeah, so thumbs up if you enjoyed today's vlog and if you've just found my little channel please don't forget to subscribe if you like to follow on with all my sewing and my dressmaking journey because it is a journey believe me and I still never fail to make a mistake in every single thing I make that stitch ripper comes out without fail so yeah but until the next time thanks for joining me today and I shall see you on my next vlog very soon. So until then, please take care and as always, happy sewing.